Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Karan, and I work as a data scientist in the Emerging Technologies Group at Red Hat. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Oindrila Chatterjee, and I'm a senior data scientist working in the same team as Karan. Um, we are part of the Emerging Tech Group uh, in the office of the CTO at Red Hat. Cool. So um, today we want to talk about how you can uncover project insights from your GitHub PR data. Um, so let me actually start off by giving some context around this project and some background on when, where we're actually coming from. So as data scientists in the Emerging Technologies Group, we work very closely with the Operate First initiative. So um, I guess at this point, many of you might have already heard a lot about this in the previous sessions. Um, but just to recap, the main philosophy behind Operate First is that well, um, open source has made software easily accessible to everyone. However, the knowledge of how to actually run it in a production cloud environment, um, that knowledge is not widely accessible yet. So things like how to install something on the cloud and how to perform upgrades and so on and so forth, these things are not made very obvious and very transparent by cloud providers. So this. Um, actually creates sort of a barrier to entry for using these projects. Um, and that is exactly what um, Operate First is trying to address. So under this initiative, we want to actually deploy and run and manage all these applications in an open source community cloud. So first of all, this actually shows the community how to um, run and operate applications. Um, and also, since we're running the software ourselves, like firsthand, um, we can actually take the lessons learned from operationalizing these softwares and then put it back, put these lessons learned back into the code. So in this way, basically, we can make our applications easier to run and manage for everyone out there. Um, so cool, that's a little quick overview on Operate First. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, I would encourage you to attend Marcel Hill's talk on this tomorrow. But anyway, so you might be thinking that what does this have to do with me as a data scientist or as a data science manager? Like, why should you care about this? So, well, one of the main workloads that runs on the Operate First cluster is Open Data Hub. And Open Data Hub is essentially a tool set of um, cloud native data science tools. So this means that you, as a data scientist, have public access to this um, collaborative and reproducible environment where you can do all sorts of really cool data science work. So yay for that. Um, and also secondly, since these workloads are run in a public cloud, we could actually collect data around the operations of these workloads and create this sort of um, operations data set. So this data set could have things like um, the memory usage patterns of a particular application or the CPU usage patterns of some operator before failure, and so on and so forth. Um, and this actually creates like a really nice opportunity for uh, data scientists to leverage this data and try to understand and improve operations over time. So this is kind of exactly what we're trying to do with one of our projects called AI for CI. So broadly speaking, the goal here is to improve CI pipelines and CI processes by adding some kind of AI capabilities to it. And uh, so this mainly involves two main tasks, I would say. The first is actually collecting some relevant data, such as build logs or CI test failure data or Bugzilla data sets and so on and bringing this data into a Python environment where you can actually analyze it. So that's the first. And the second part to it is actually building some machine learning models and some machine learning workflows on top of this data. So as you can imagine from the title of the talk, the data source that we're gonna talk about today is gonna be GitHub data. So specifically uh, with this sub project, uh, what we wanna show is how you can collect your data or collect your GitHub data in a format that's suitable for um, analytics. And then how you can calculate some interesting 
KPIs related to project development and also track them over time. And then finally, how can you use and create ML models to actually help you uh, in this uh, project development process? So for example, uh, how you can have a model that predicts time to merge of a pull request so that you have a better idea of how much estimated effort would go into that PR and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's a quick highlight of this um, GitHub PR data insights subproject. And now to talk about some of these steps in more details, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Wendrilla. Awesome, thanks for that introduction, uh, Karan. So as a first step in analyzing, uh, we want to collect the data and um, have a method to uh, extract it and analyze it. So we use the Project Thoughts MI tool to collect data from GitHub repositories of interest. Uh, the MI tool is able to collect data from Git repositories such as pull requests over a date range and provide us with a JSON formatted dump to analyze. The scheduler tool um, is a part of Project Thought 2, and it is used to run a custom schedule like daily, weekly, and so on. Now, to get the repository's pull request data, you can use the CLI tool called SRC Ops Metrics. Uh, we can use the create flag to create knowledge from a GitHub repository. We can use um, the is local store flag, um, the is local flag to store the results locally because by default, MI tries to store data on a Ceph S3 storage. Uh, then we specify the repository that we want to collect the data from with the repository flag. These are essentially repository metadata that are being inspected, example, issues or pull requests from which specified features are extracted and stored as a data frame. So now let's take a look at the workflow of this project or the various components that it consists of. So with the interest of prototyping this workflow, we started with the OpenShift origin GitHub repository and we collect its pull request data over the years using the MI tool that we discussed earlier. We then transform the input columns obtained from the pull request, such as size of the PR, the types of files that are added in the PR, the description of the PR, et cetera, into various features which can be ingested by a machine learning model. These features can also be used for deriving meaningful metrics can be used to gain insights into the software development process. Uh, as a next step, in order to view statistics, KPIs, metrics related to the project visually, we create automated dashboards which can provide greater visibility into the aspects of the project such as contributor, merge statistics over time, and other metrics which can provide more insights into the software engineering process. The next component of this project is a machine learning model. Using the features of the, we wanted to train a model which is able to predict the time that will that will take to merge new incoming PRs on a GitHub repository. To achieve that, we explore several classification and regression-based models, which can classify the time to merge values of pull requests into one of few predefined time ranges or predict a time to merge value. Finally, we deployed the model yielding the best results into a interactive service using Selden. This endpoint is available for anybody to interact with and test out on new PRs. So now, in order to create the dashboards and visualizations that we discussed earlier, we follow three steps. Firstly, we get the repository data using the MI tool. Secondly, we use 
Jupyter Notebooks to explore the data and extract meaningful features from the columns and create SQL tables in Trino database engine. Finally, we import the tables that we created and create visualizations using Apache Superset. So let's take a quick dem uh, look at the dashboard that we prototyped. So I'm going to quickly share my screen here to show you the dashboard. All right. So here is the dashboard that we compiled from the data uh, collected from the OpenShift origin repository. Uh, and this dashboard ability into the project and its development process. So we can visualize um, several statistics and metrics such as the size of the pull request in terms of the, in term of the content that it adds, uh, the top contributors, the trend of new and unique contributors over time. We also plot some pull request trends, such as the number of commits added across PRs, the number of files that are modified over time. And finally, we also calculate certain metrics, such as the average time taken to merge pull requests over time. So these metrics can be useful for engineering managers and can help identify any gaps or blockers within the software development process. And we are also able to filter this database, uh, this dashboard, um, based on the time or the date range. And we can also filter by size. These are just ordinal variables which uh, categorize the um, pull request based on six sizes. So if we filter it by uh, size two, the dashboard should um, show and reflect pull requests uh, within this uh, size range. So uh, that was a quick um, overview of the dashboard. I will hand it over to Karan, who will go over the deployment process. Uh, cool. Uh, thank you, Andrula. So yeah, so now basically we've seen uh, how to collect this data, analyze it, and how to make some simple ML models using the feature engineering process that Andrula just described. So the next thing we want to do is to actually deploy this machine learning model and make it available as a service so that it can be consumed by others and like other applications. Um, and specifically for deployment, we're going to be using the Selden operator. So to do this, the first thing we do is to save our pre-trained model onto a S3 bucket on Ceph. So here we have saved the model.joblib, which is our model, um, into this OPF data catalog zero backup bucket. Cool. So then next, we write a small Python class that actually describes how to load the model. Uh, so here you can see um, it's basically just downloading the model from S3. So, uh, so define that. And also we define a function called predict to, sh to, to tell it how do you make a prediction on an incoming request. Uh, so in this case, we're just calling model.predict on the incoming request. Uh, then we add some runtime dependencies for our service into a requirements.txt file. So in this case, we have added the scikit-learn uh, Python package because that's what our model is built on. And we also add the Selden core Python package because that's needed by the deployment service. Um, in addition to that, we also specify some build time uh, environment variables for S2i. So we specify the model name, which is the name of the class that's doing the loading and predicting and some other uh, setup environment variables. Uh, cool, so once we have these three things, we put them into a folder like this, and then uh, we build an S2I image with Selden core as the base image, and these three, and, and the folder containing these three things as the context directory. Uh, so this is the image that we have created for our case. And then once we have this image, we go ahead and deploy this as a service using a config file that looks like this. 
Um, so here uh, we've basically mentioned the URL to the Quay image repo, which is uh, GitHub PR TTM. Um, and then we also specify some environment variables that the service will need at runtime. So this is the S3 credentials in our case. Um, and then we specify any resource requirements for the service as well as the service orchestrator. And then finally, we define uh, what kind of endpoint it's going to be. So for our case, it's going to be a REST endpoint. And then once we have this config file, we can uh, deploy it. And then Selden will take care of deploying a service for us. And then once that service is deployed, we can expose it to the rest of the world by creating a route in OpenShift. All right, so now let me go through an actual live demo of how you would actually go about doing this. So, um, so this is the YAML file, the config file that I just mentioned in the previous slide. And it's pointing to the uh, image repository that we have created. So that's going to be this repo for our case. And I've named this deployment demo deployment, just so that we know it's not for production. So what I'm going to do is copy this config file and go to my uh, OpenShift console and click on Install Operators, go to Selden, and create a new Selden deployment. So here, I'm going to just paste the content of the config file in the YAML view and then click on Create. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, it's starting to create this deployment for me. And now I can go into the services tab and take a look at how far along it's come in the deployment process. Uh, so yeah, here I can see that the demo service has been created for me. And just to make sure this is the right one. Yeah, so as you can see, it's, it's created just now and it's uh, ready for deployment. So to, to uh, expose it to the rest of the world, I'm gonna go to routes and then create a new route with any random name to it, uh, and then select my service, which is the demo classifier, and then select the port at which I've exposed the service. So, and then I can click on create. I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but we have five minutes left. So this is supposed yes. to be for uh, answering the questions or something like this. So uh, I would ask, yeah, I would ask you to, because we have straight uh, time slots, so I would ask you to uh, whether answer the questions or just uh, just, just a reminder. <laughs> so Yeah, no, thank you. Oh, yeah, I think we just have 30 more seconds left, so it should be mm -hmm. almost done. Thank you. Cool. So yeah, uh, now that my service is created, I'm going to copy the link to this and show that it actually works. Uh, so this is some, oops. Uh, so basically, in this uh, notebook, I've created uh, a notebook to pull some data from the MI scheduler. And um, I've pasted the link to my service. And hopefully, once it restarts, I should be able to show uh, that I can actually query the service. Uh, OK, in interest of time, I'm not able to reach the notebook. but. I would encourage the viewers to check out the endpoint over here and see that it actually works with the real data. Cool, so I guess that was all that I wanted to show for the demo and then show that how we can get set up for the service in just a couple of minutes. Uh, all right, cool. so I'm gonna hand over to Angela to finish off the presentation. Yes, I'm gonna quickly wrap this up. So. Uh... This is a fairly new initiative, and there are several next steps planned to extend and improve this. So firstly, we want to extend this prototype service to some of our internal repos and our Operate First community repos. We also want to integrate the time to mode hub bots such as Sesheta, to new incoming PRs on the GitHub UI as labels. We also wish to use Kubeflow pipelines to automate this process. This will help version control versions of the model prototype via Kubeflow pipeline metrics. 
And finally, we wish to iterate on the model developed for time to merge prediction with an attempt to improve the model performance metrics that we achieve. Um, so great, that's all we had for you today. Thank you for joining our session. And here are some links to the project website, the GitHub repository, and the social media channels for the Operate First initiative where we regularly post some updates. And feel free to connect with us on these channels. You can also reach out to us via the Slack uh, channel, Data Science, where we usually hang out or email us to continue the conversation. And thank you again. Uh, hope you enjoy the rest of DevConf. And feel free to post any questions in chat. Thanks, thanks Karin, Karin and oh, Andriala. There is one question, and I guess uh, we have two minutes. Uh, and it's 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 enough to answer at least one question. So the question is: Any plans for supporting other code review systems like GitLab, Bitbucket, or Gerrit, etc.? Um, so, so uh, we haven't really made this. Uh, so, so as far as the PR data collection goes, we are exactly not sure about that because this is developed by the Thoth team. But I'm sure there'd be, uh, if there's interest, they'll be happy to support these as well. Um, and as far as the service goes, um, it's it's agnostic to what platform you're calling it for. So if you're if you have a bot in GitLab that's trying to query the service for uh, time to merge, then it should work just fine. Okay, thank you. It's uh, it's all questions we have. So polls are are ready to in just in the in in the tab. So thank you for your presentation. Cool. Thank you for moderating. Thanks, Pavel. You're welcome.